welcome back. I hope everyone got a little relaxation in over midterm break. Have the usual dose of birds to start off with today. We have a, a robin enjoying some, some berries, uh, but we go for more exciting fare here than, than robins. So have a, a great horned owl, I think a, a, a juvenile, and not just one, but uh, two of them. Very, very curious about the photographer. Uh, always wild to see how much uh, owl pupils can, can dilate. And uh, I know these, these juveniles, curious what's going on. But also, you know, naps are important. So uh, we, have a, we have a sleepy, sleepy owl uh, on our hands. And uh, bonus picture of how uh, these owls make, make their living catching things in these, these sharp claws. All right, any uh, questions to start us out? All right, so last Friday uh, we talked about how we can slice a list uh, to uh, get portions of it. So I want to start off with a bit of practice on slicing. So you'll need to grab your card if you haven't. And so here, question is, we do some slicing and some concatenation and uh, take uh, a moment and think about what is this going to print. All right. Here's what we're thinking. Please take a moment to discuss with your neighbor what, what slicing is, is going to happen here. All right, we've uh, achieved close to consensus on A, which is indeed what, uh, what our slicing and concatenation will give us. So can I get a, a volunteer to talk about our first slice here, our uh, colon one and what that is going to, what that means. Gabby. So colon one is just specifying the stock. Um, and so it will, yeah, so it will slice up to but not including um, index, whatever's indexed at one, which is where we just get A. Exactly. The, just like our, our range function, we can do slicing with uh, one, two, or three uh, uh, inputs, and when we have colon and, and an input, that's our stop index. Uh, how about our, our other slice, S1 colon? Someone else uh, tell us about how, how you're thinking about that one? Uh, this slice starts at index 1, which is B, and then there is no end, so it just goes to the end, which is to C. Exactly. The, we have a single index and a colon that's giving us our start index, and we're just going all the way to the end. That means that when we just had our stop index, we had to fill in something for where we're starting, which our default is start start at the beginning of our sequence. So that's going to go slice A and then slice B C. Concatenate that with with Mu. Uh, any questions about this about this example? Any part of it be helpful to go over? All right, since today we're going to be uh, talking about multi-dimensional data, in particular images, let's first look at uh, slicing a nested list, a, a multi-dimensional piece of data. So uh, take a minute and, and kind of work through on your own what you think this series of, of slices and, and indexing is going to do. 
All right, we're largely thinking uh, it's going to print nine, but please talk through with your neighbor kind of each after each step uh, of these different slices or indexes what you think uh, it will be at that point. All right, we have almost unanimous that it's going to be nine, which indeed is uh, what we'll get. So again, kind of break it down step by step. So can uh, someone share how you thought about this first slice, colon two? Here. And why is that? Because it's zero, one, the list is zero, one, but it's not including two. So uh, zero, one, second is five, five, so we, shot, we locked that off. Exactly. The, we're slicing our, our list of three lists, starting at the beginning up to, but not including index two, so that gives us the, the first two. Uh, then we take that and we apply this index negative one. Volunteer to share what, what that does, what that gives us. Gabby? I mean, it means we start at the, like, go backwards in the indices, so we can start with the last one in the list, which in this case is now 289. Exactly. Uh, our negative indices are indexing from the back of the list. Negative 1 is our last thing. 2, 8, 9. All right, we've made it kind of two parts in. Now our, our third uh, part, our second slice here. Seen, seen this sort of slice before? Anyone want to remind us what that does? Emma? Pretty much turns the whole list in reverse. Exactly, that our, our slice with a, a, a step of negative one, we know it's the step because we have two colons. So it says we're leaving out the start, we're leaving out the end, and then our step is negative one. And we've seen that this will just reverse our list, nine, eight, two. And our last step, what's that going to be? Marcus? It takes the first index, which is 9. Exactly. We, we take the result of this whole thing, 982, get the, the, the first element thing in index 0. That gives us 9. Uh, what are your questions on these, these different steps? Marcus? Um, so if we instead want to get 5 instead of 9, would we say like data colon 2, 3 for the first step? Could we do that? Uh, yes. So if we put any uh, number larger than 2, it will just slice all the way to the end, because we only have index 0, 1, and 2. And so you're, in your example, if we change this to 3, then we'll just get the whole original data. And our last one will be 555. We'll reverse it, which it's not very interesting, and then we'll, we'll take the first element and get five. Other questions? All right, so there's a couple things that I would like you to take away from this uh, example as we are going to start thinking about uh, images. Uh, the first is we have a nested list here, and when we want to get something inside of a list inside a list, we kind of index multiple times in a row to kind of go into our, our nested list. So we saw this, this negative one got us one of our lists inside of data, and then when we indexed again, this zero, that got us one of the numbers inside of the inner list. The second thing I'd like to call your attention to is that 
when we're thinking about a, a representing a grid of some kind, like this sort of three by three grid that data gives us, it's when we do it as this sort of lists of lists, it's going to be what is uh, it's going to be in what is called row major order, which means that that the inner list, like our R316, is kind of a row of our three by three grid of numbers, and that the columns, like this first <coughs> column, three, two, five, that's spread out between multiple inner lists. The consequence of this row major order means that we don't have a good way to slice out a column that if we said something like, okay, data, I'd like to slice all the rows. So just colon, start at the beginning, go to the end, and then get uh, the second column. This isn't actually going to work. We're just going to get all, all of data, and then this is going to give us the second row. So when it comes to using Python's lists to represent a kind of grid of data, it's not ideal because it doesn't let us uh, kind of work along all the dimensions. And we're going to see uh, uh, a new Python module today called NumPy, which is going to give us a kind of data that behaves a lot more like a grid of numbers. Uh, and it's going to be really useful when we're, when we're dealing with, with images. All right, any questions on, on this? All right, so let's, uh, let's start out by talking about how do we actually represent color? Uh, on a computer system because when we're talking about displaying an image that's really just displaying the right combination of colors that make up that that image so when we print something on paper when we need to put down ink that produces a particular color uh, commonly use a system called CMYK for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so inside a, a, a printer, for example, there'll be uh, a supply of yellow ink, of magenta ink, of cyan ink, and of black ink. And it will have combine these inks in the right amounts to produce the colors uh, that need to be printed. And so yellow and magenta, for example, will, will give us red. This is different. Uh, uh, it's different when we talk about making color appear on a computer screen, uh, uh, doing it with light rather than with ink. And when it comes to light, we're actually going to base things on RGB red, green, blue. And there's actually going to be tiny uh, red, green, and blue lights as part of the, the screen, and the red, green, and blue lights will light up in different amounts to produce certain colors. And there are different possible uh, kind of geometries or arrangements of these red, green, and blue lights. Uh, for example, kind of uh, older TV screens and uh, computer monitors, which were called CRTs, uh, uh, computer monitors had uh, uh, these red, green, and blue as, as circles. TVs had them as strips. Uh, more modern screens are uh, 
uh, use that technology LCD stands for liquid crystal display again have kind of their uh, different arrangements of these red green and blue and even down to the level of different models of cell phone uh, will uh, have different arrangements. For example, this is a really close-up picture of a Samsung, Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Uh, we can see a, a Samsung Galaxy Nexus, uh, as well as an iPhone 5. Uh, but it all comes down to red, green, and blue lights that are so small that to our eyes, the red, green, and blue blend together to produce uh, a particular color. And each of these red, green, and blue uh, uh, lights in combination give us what's called a pixel. Kind of the smallest unit of the image that we're producing will have a certain amount of red, certain amount of green, certain amount of blue light to produce uh, a particular color for that pixel. So. when we represent an image on a computer, like we have a file on the computer and it's representing an image, uh, it's going to be divided into these pixels, each of which has a red, green, and blue. And uh, we can uh, kind of see how the computer represent the, represents these uh, with something called a, a color picker, where you see down here, uh, in the lower left, it's telling us that this color, uh, that this particular shade of green has 50 red, 168 green, and 82 blue. And these are out of uh, 255 possible. So it's 50 out of 255 possible amount of red, 168 out of, out of 255 green, and 82 out of 255 blue. Uh, and we can say, well, what if we had twice as much red? We get uh, a slightly lighter shade of green, double that again. Now we kind of have added enough red to the green in order to get a kind of yellow color. And this is how, we're, how we represent uh, individual colors on a computer system is this uh, just telling it the amount of red, amount of green, amount of blue, uh, and kind of each, each individual cell, each uh, kind of point within, within an image will be one of these pixels that has a red and green and blue value. All right, questions on uh, uh, this, this color stuff. Yeah. This is not maybe like a super important question, but there, is there like a reason that it's different between ink and like light? Like, is there a reason that it's Um. So. Off the top of my head, I don't know the kind of historical reason why there's the difference. I'm kind of thinking about it, uh, kind of putting ink on paper is, uh, is uh, just a different process than kind of emitting light. Uh, uh, and so, um, but yeah, that's a great question. I should, I should look into that and, and I, will, I will report back. Sam. Does it have something, I'm just spitballing here. Does it have something to do with like the actual ink that you're working with? Don't you have like different colors of ink that you put into a printer? And maybe that has something to do with it? Or it could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean you're you're absolutely right that the colors of ink that we put into a printer are these cyan, magenta, and and yellow. Um, and I think the, the question is is why those instead of red ink, green ink, and, and blue ink? Um, and uh, I there is no doubt an uh, uh, important technical technical reason for it. Other questions? Summer. I think there's like an optical theory where like when we see color that's pink, we see color that's um, not being absorbed by that material. 
versus in light, it mixes differently, which is why they're two different forms. Yes, that is that is an excellent point. That kind of the the physics of of light when there's ink on a paper, we see the light that's being reflected by uh, by the material rather than absorbed. Whereas when we're like emitting light to show on a projector, we're shining light as opposed to causing certain light to be to be absorbed. So um, that's uh, it seems likely that 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 the optics would would be involved. Other questions? All right, so let's actually build up uh, uh, an image of our very own. Uh, and so this is going to be uh, a situation where I'd, I'd like you to kind of read and follow along with the code rather than, than trying to, to type it out yourself. So I have here a Python file, tinyimage.py. All this code will be on the course calendar as usual. And I'm going to use uh, two two modules that we haven't seen before. One is uh, a module particularly for dealing, uh, 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 that's able to kind of open uh, open image files, and that's this matplotlib.pyplot, and I'm going to rename it plt, uh, just so I don't have to type out this whole thing each time, uh, and I'll also import uh, uh, numpy, which I, I mentioned earlier, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an image. And the image that I want to create is the following. I want it to be a, a two by two with red here and here, blue here, and green here. And I said earlier that the red, green, and blue range from zero to 255. And turns out we can also think of them as going between zero and one. As a as a kind of percentage of uh, zero to two fifty five, so that this sort of red pixel, I might say, has a hundred percent red, zero percent green, zero percent blue. Whereas my blue pixel, zero percent red, zero percent green. 100% blue. And if I want to represent this as a kind of nested list, as, uh, as we've been thinking about, I know it's going to have two rows, two columns, and then kind of at each one of these points, what do I, what would I need to keep track of to like know what color goes there? Sam? Where it is in relation to the window, or how big you make it, something. So that's, that's right, each of these will have a, have a particular location. Um, if I want to know the color of that location, I need three numbers. I need my red, my green, my blue. And so this actually is going to take us to having a three-dimensional list, or a list of lists of lists, where we have some rows, some columns, and then at each kind of particular point, we have a list of three numbers for red, green, and blue. So if I want to kind of do this in Python, I can uh, cr create a NumPy array that has uh, a single 
a single pixel in it. It's this kind of triply nested list, one row, one column, and within that, my red, green, blue. And then I can have matplotlib display this kind of one pixel image to me, which means when I run this program, what pops up is my kind of one red pixel, as I said, 100% red, 0% green, 0% blue. So to make this image that I've drawn up here on the board, I need to kind of build out this list of lists to have my other three pixels. And we have to remember that this is in row major order. So kind of the, the, first, uh, the first row is going to be a list, and then the second row is a separate list. So if I want my blue, that's 0% red, 0% green, 100% blue. And I can uh, run this, make sure, OK, red and blue showing up uh, uh, reasonably. And I need to have, if I want a second row, I need a separate kind of uh, a list for that. So I will put that on, a, on an, its own line where that's, that kind of next row has uh, a green and then another red. And there we go. We have our, our, our very own uh, four, pixel, uh, four pixel image with, uh, uh, that we have kind of built up to have these, these red, green, and blue pixels. All right, what are your questions about this? Rebecca. That's a great question. How did Python know kind of that the, the red was in the upper left and the green was in the in the lower left? Uh, and that comes from how I made my sort of lists of lists. So if I was I have my lists of lists image. And if I want to kind of index the first row, first column, that's kind of uh, index zero, give us the first row, and then index zero within that to give us the first column. So that would be our, our red pixel. If I wanted to get the green pixel, what index would I have for, for the row? Yeah, I see the uh, uh, data hold up one, and that's row zero, row one. And for the column, we're still in the first column, so that's index zero. And so when I made this kind of lists of uh, th this nested list, I uh, can uh, add in some extra lines so it's a little easier to see that I have these square brackets. There we go. These square brackets are kind of the outer ones. And then in here, I have a row, has a row major order. So the, the first nested list here is our first row. And so the computer is going to interpret the first thing in the first row as this color at 0, 0. Second thing in the first row as the color here. And then when I have kind of a, a new list, another list after this, this gives us the second row. And so it knew to put the green here because my 0, 1, 0, 0% 0 red, 100% green, 0% blue, 
is the first thing in the second row. And kind of where all these are in this list of, of, of lists is determining kind of where the, the colors show up. Does, it, does that answer your question, Rebecca? Other questions? John. So uh, if you like, if you want to make like a really big image and like you ran out that way, it would just have to be like a lot of uh, yes, indeed. We, uh, uh, if we wanted to make uh, uh, an image that was a thousand pixels tall and a thousand pixels wide, uh, writing it out by hand, the red, green, and blue for each pixel, very tedious. Uh, that's not usually the way that we make images on computers. Fortunately, um, uh, images might be captured by a camera and then we can put that on a computer, or use some uh, uh, artistic program that lets us kind of draw uh, uh, on a computer and, and is sort of basically giving us a lot of useful tools for filling in the color of different pixels rather than typing out the, the red, green, and blue values. Shoko? Well, what if you leave one score empty? What if I did that? Yep. Let's find out. Oh, I need to close this. Ah, it complains that uh, it can't display that image because, in fact, when we're when we're talking about an, an image on a computer, it always has to be a a, a, a rectangular grid. There's always a, a certain number of rows and a certain number of columns, and every row has to have the same number of columns. So if we, if we try and, and make our image kind of in some other shape than a grid, <coughs> matplotlib just says, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Other questions? Oh, yeah, so. So what would be the difference if we used a Python list for this exact thing instead of an alpha? So, uh, in this small example, we could actually use a regular Python list. Uh, NumPy arrays, uh, the, the main thing that I was complaining about with our, um, with our Python list is that we couldn't slice out a column, uh, but we can do that with NumPy arrays. So, just to, to show how that, how that works now, uh, if we wanted to um, take our image and slice out just the second column, so we should get uh, a blue uh, and a red, something that we can do in NumPy arrays is say, okay, slice all the rows and then just the second column. And so unlike lists, we can actually index kind of multi and, and or slice multi multiple dimensions within single square brackets separated by commas. And so this will be, um, uh, this will be very, uh, very useful. When I run this program, I don't see my print statement happening on line 11 here because after I have matplotlib show me an image, the program will pause until I close the image. And so in order to see this print happen, I need to close this image and then it prints out and indeed I got this second column, which uh, I would have had to kind of write loops and be appending to something if, if I, uh, to do that with, with normal Python lists. So that, that's one of the big advantages of, of these NumPy arrays. Other questions? Jonathan. This kind of similar to what I just asked, but if you like recorded <coughs> them like an actual image, could you then print it out as like a bunch of numbers? It's uh, interesting that you should say that because that is what we're going to do right now. <laughs> so let's go to a new Python file, same import statement, and I'm going to use matplotlibs im read to just like open an image and I'm going to open owl.png 
an image, an image file. I will print out image, and then I'll have matplotlib show it to us. So I run this. Oh, look, it's the sleepy owl. And if I look at what got printed, indeed, it's this uh, giant uh, uh, list of lists of lists. Um, and there's, there's ellipses, because when we print out a NumPy array, it will actually kind of put in ellipses instead of printing out all uh, 1 million uh, pixels. Uh, so when we read an image, we just get this giant grid of, of pixels. And with this here, we can actually take a closer look and zoom in. Zoom in more. And now we're getting close enough that we can see the individual pixels. We can see these little squares, and within the square, there is a single color. Because this image has kind of 700 some rows and 1,000 some columns, kind of at each cell within that grid, there's a particular color. So we can see that when we, when we zoom in far enough on our, on our image and zoom back out. And kind of when, when we're zoomed out enough, we just can't see all those little boundaries uh, between, between the pixels. Uh, and so it just looks like a smooth, a smooth image um, uh, at this point. Now, you may ha have noticed that these sort of inner, inner lists here uh, have four numbers instead of three. And I told you that every pixel was red, green, and blue. And we see sort of something between zero and one for, our, for the kind of first three. And then the last thing is always one, just for, for all of these. So I now have to confess that I uh, told a lie by omission in that we also can have something called alpha, which is a measurement of transparency as a sort of fourth value in our pixels. And so it's, it's one all the way across because we are displaying 100% of the color in all these pixels. And if this, in, if this alpha was less than one, we would be uh, 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 displaying kind of less than 100% than of the color until we got down to zero and we'd just be displaying none of the color uh, for that pixel. Sam. So building off that, if we wanted to make this image in particular 50% lighter, just so like that would be a little bit more transparent. How would you go about doing that since you really can't edit that without you having to change it? Hmm. Yes. So we have this big grid of uh, of pixels, and we want to do something that that changes all all the pixels, um, make them 50% percent lighter in this case. Well. Turns out we have some tools in Python for writing code that gets repeated for some number of times. For example, code that gets repeated for each row and for each column. And so to do exactly uh, uh, what Sammy suggested, lighten every, uh, every pixel by, by 50%, we might say for uh, row in range of len of image, and then for column in range of len of that particular row. And this is the same idea as when we we're making a grid of, of bricks in lab two. We had a loop over uh, each row, and then within that row, a loop over each column. And then we can say, OK, image at that particular the pixel at that row and column. We want to change uh, and that uh, uh, we want to change that alpha value, 
So if our, our pixels have red, green, blue, and alpha, what is the index of, of our alpha value? Gabby? It could be index three. Exactly. Red would be at zero, green at one, blue at two, alpha at index three. And we just want to set that to, to 0.5, make them all 50% transparent. Let's take a look at what this does. I do have to close the old one, though. And indeed, all our, all our pixels are now only 50% of that color and 50% of, in this case, white, the, the kind of default background. And uh, this is a really important idea, not the necessarily making it 50% lighter, but using the, this kind of loop to go through our rows and go through our columns, if we want to do something to the pixels of an image, uh, you're going to be uh, uh, implementing a number of different of these sort of image manipulations in the, in the new lab, lab five, and you're going to be doing this by using these sort of loops to go through all our different uh, positions in our grid and change something about uh, uh, some or all of those, all of those pixels. What other questions do you have? All right, there are a few other things I'd like to tell you about uh, uh, our NumPy arrays. Uh, in particular, they have both a shape and a size. And the shape is a, going to be a tuple that is the dimensions of our array. And the size is going to be the number of entries in the array. And if we run the, the program to see what gets printed out, we see that our psi or our shape is 702 rows, 1024 columns, and then four values for each pixel. So in our sort of three dimensional array, number of columns, uh, number of rows, number of columns, and then color values, we get 702 by 1024 by four. And then if we were to multiply these three numbers together, that would give us the just total uh, amount of different numbers in the whole array, which is what uh, this image.size told us. So all together, there's uh, 2.8 million uh, values between zero and one that all together give us uh, our, our sleepy owl. So the other, the other uh, nifty thing uh, that we can, we can do when we have our image data in a NumPy array is we can slice along both rows and columns to get some particular portion of the image. So let's say I'll, I'll comment out the code that is making things transparent and I will uh, uh, Instead of showing the image, I will show the image from row 200 to row 500 and from column 200 to column 800. And so I'm, this is the same slicing that we've seen with lists, but thanks to uh, uh, image being a NumPy array, I can use this syntax to slice both along rows and columns to just get a section it's a, a rectangular section of the image. And I happen to have chose those values because I knew that's just the face of the owl. 
Carl. Um, for the new closed electors, yeah, for uh, plot I'm showing, uh, you added a third thing in the parameters, say like zero to one, that only print the red and green. So what if we did uh, zero to two to just get the red, red and green? Oops. Ah, it says that 300 by 600 by two isn't something that it understands as an image because in order to have a color, we need a red and a green and a blue. And so if we just have two numbers instead of three, Matplotlib says, I don't know how to treat that as, as an image. It doesn't know what color, what color to make it. Something that we could do if we wanted to play with the color is instead of changing the, the alpha, we could just red, green, blue. Okay, green's index one. We could just set all the green values to zero. I'm just going to remove all the green from the image. And we get a, a kind of a psychedelic owl, where it's just the red and the blue. All the green has been set to zero. And again, the, com uh, the computer is just showing us the colors that are made when we take however much red and blue were there originally and just set all the green to 0% green. Other questions? All right, I have some slicing practice. This time, image style. So I would like for you to Given that you have a variable image which has some uh, 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 some kind of uh, rows by columns with uh, a uh, list of, of three or four values for each picture, uh, to write down uh, uh, an, an expression that is going to It's going to kind of crop our image by 200 pixels on each side. So I want the result to be uh, uh, an array that is kind of 200 uh, columns in on the left and the right and 200 rows smaller from the top and the bottom. Also, I would like you to slice out a 100 by 100 box in the bottom right. And uh, uh, for this, one thing to note, it may be a little small for folks in the back to see, uh, but there are uh, uh, coordinate axes shown on this image here, kind of 0 to 600, uh, 0 to 300. And like when we were working with PGL, our 0, 0 coordinate is the upper left of, of our array. So pixel at zero, zero is the upper left most pixel, which means when I say slice out a box uh, in the bottom right, that's kind of the, the, the coordinate that is kind of at the end of the rows, end of the columns would be the, the bottom right most pixel. So uh, please work with your, your neighbors on how you would uh, uh, 
what, what you would do with the, the image variables uh, slices to give us a, a cropped image and to get this this box in the lower right. And Dominic and I will be wandering around. All right, let's uh, talk about how we might uh, uh, approach uh, getting getting these two these two things. I'm gonna comment out code we had here. So if we wanted to crop by 200, 200 pixels, and someone share uh, how you were thinking about uh, about uh, doing this with uh, with a, a slice or, or maybe some other way. So we'd slice from uh, zero. Uh, so so can you you say a bit more about like what kind of the the thinking behind kind of uh, zero and and len and, and minus yeah. two hundred. So for the rows, you know, when cropping by two hundred pixels on each side, I was imagining you have your, your big box and then cropping two hundred pixels off the bottom and off the side to make the smaller image. And so we start from zero, and then you want to go basically all the way. The reason why we did a range line image minus two hundred is because you're going basically all the way to the end, but then not quite there. It's from the end, um, and then range then image row minus two hundred would um, do the same thing. Yeah. So this is this is a a, a great start. Uh, there are uh, uh, one one tweak that we'll we'll need to make is that range gives us back a, a sequence of numbers. We just want a single number that is like how many rows there are. Uh, so we, we actually, len of image uh, will, will give us kind of how many rows there are without, uh, we wouldn't need range to, to give us uh, the sequence. When we're writing a loop over each row, that's when we want range to give us that, that sequence of, of indexes. Um, and then I, I think I heard you say that for this len, we wanted the length of a row rather than the number of rows. Um, does anyone have a have an idea of how to get the the length of a row or the or the number of columns? Max. If you were to take the length of an index in it, that would then give you. Uh, then it wouldn't have to be a specific one, just any that would give you the number of like points, which is the number of columns. Exactly. If we index bracket zero, that gives us the first row. And so we take the length of that, that's going to give us the length of a row. We take the length of image as a whole, that's going to give us our, in, in this small example, like, Len of image gives us our number of rows, and if we want the number of columns, we get a particular row out of it, get one of these inner lists and take the length of that, which is important if our image is not square. Um, this two by two is square, but there might be a different number of, of rows and, and columns. Other thoughts on this uh, cropping by, by 200 pixels, Becca? Um, I was wondering, could you also just do, like, where you did above, you did 200 to 500, could you do 200 to negative 200 instead? Like, mm. you know, the way that you did for me went to the eyes of the owl? Yeah, if I do 200, start at index 200, and go up to 200 from the end, 
now I've kind of brought 200 off from the start and stopped 200 in from the end. Uh, and so I think if we, oh, I actually need to do second part. And indeed, this has kind of brought our image of 200 in on, in on all sides. Uh, other thoughts or, or questions on this slice? All right, for our uh, second one of getting our box in the, in the bottom right, um, that we can use a very, very similar idea where we will, would just start at negative 100 and go to the end. And so for both these row and columns, we start 100 from the end, slice all the way to the end. Give this a try. The first image pops up. Our program pauses. I close that. Second image pops up. Turns out the lower right corner, not a particularly exciting part of our, of our picture of an owl, uh, but we can get out, get out that lower right corner. I have office hours starting in 10 minutes, otherwise I will see you Friday. <laughs>